60 minutes overtime. We've grounded planes in Switzerland and the Middle East. We've arrested smugglers in Italy and Germany and Latvia, and we've charged money launderers in the UK. So basically what we've shown is there's no place to hide. This week on 60 Minutes, we report on the great lengths Russian oligarchs are going to in an effort to hide their wealth. U.S. prosecutors have been looking globally for violations of the sanctions levied against oligarchs in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. One of those prosecutors is U.S. Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco. She leads the Justice Department's Klepto Capture Task Force, which enforces sanctions on Russian oligarchs and finds their hidden assets around the world. We have exposed the networks, the, the tradecraft that uh, the oligarchs and their networks are using. So we will use every tool we can at our disposal to go after uh, those networks and that hidden wealth. So we'll go wherever we need to go. We'll go as far as Fiji if we have to. Lisa Monaco says the effort has relied on extensive cooperation with foreign partners. Last year, the Justice Department requested the seizures of a $300 million super yacht in Fiji owned by oligarch Suleiman Karamov and a $90 million yacht off the coast of Spain owned by oligarch Victor Vexelberg. Both men are under U.S. sanctions. And those are just kind of tips of the iceberg. We've seized and frozen bank accounts owned by oligarchs and other sanctioned individuals. So it's layer upon layer and millions of dollars of ill-gotten gains. It's a lot more difficult to identify assets that are invested elsewhere. So real estate, yachts, jets, investment funds, because there is no registry. The professionals working on those sectors might be reluctant to denounce a customer or a client and so on. Myra Martini is an analyst for Transparency International, a nonprofit that tracks money laundering around the world. Explain how complex are these cases? This isn't as simple as searching for the oligarch's name in the bank register. Yeah, those cases are very complex because what happens is that they set up a company that is owned in one country, that is owned by another company in another country, that is then owned by another company in a third country. This makes it very difficult for anyone trying to understand who owns that, that yacht. There is one additional tool that is also used to add to the complexity of ownership structures, that is a trust. And a trust is basically a private agreement between the parties. So I own an asset, I decide to put that asset into a trust, so I call on someone to manage that trust on my behalf. There is usually no requirement for this private, private agreement to be registered with a government authority. So it's just something that we can sign, put in a dryer in our office, and that's it. And nobody knows that it even exists. Among the ultra-luxury goods prosecutors from the U.S. Justice Department have moved to seize are a $60 million Gulfstream jet and a $350 million Boeing aircraft. The pair were registered to a web of five shell companies and anonymous trusts, all linking back to Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich, according to court documents. Abramovich himself hasn't been sanctioned in the United States. But Lisa Monaco says other laws make seizures like these possible. That case is very important, Sharon, because what it shows is we're using every tool at our disposal. And in this case, it's our export control laws. So the Commerce Department can put in place, as they have after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, a set of uh, prohibitions on exporting or transferring certain U.S.-made technology or U.S.-made goods, in this case, including U.S. aircraft parts. They bar that from going to Russia, and that can include the American-made private jets owned by Roman Abramovich. As our uh, court documents lay out, in the wake of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, we saw those private jets going back and forth to Russia in violation of these export control laws. The Justice Department's Klepto Capture Unit doesn't just see Kremlin companions hiding assets, it also looks for those who are helping these oligarchs evade sanctions. Lisa Monaco says the unit's work serves as a warning. To banks, 
to aviation industry, to insurance companies, all who have to make that asset go, it's a sign and a, and a warning to them, be careful with whom you're dealing because we are watching and there will be consequences if you aid and abet the evasion of these sanctions. Still, Myra Martini says the U.S. has more work to do to prevent oligarchs from stashing their money right here in the United States. I think the U.S. has for really long been a uh, place considered very, very attractive to those wanting to remain anonymous because it's very easy to set up a company in the U.S. without having to declare information about the real owners. What happens now is that the U.S. finally adopt legislation that will require the real owners to be disclosed and we are waiting for that to be in place so we finally get some more transparency of asset ownership and company ownership in the U.S.